Hi, this is Dr. Jesse Rhines, and I want to welcome all you guys and gals, etc., to loft interviews once again. And again, I'm not in my loft. Actually, I'm in the building. I'm downstairs in the Gaslight's office building, and I am about to interview an artist who is having an exhibit here, and it's on when? It's Thursday, August 28th, mm -hmm. 6 to 10. 6 to 10 on Thursday. And this artist's name is? I'm Gus Harper. Gus Harper. <laughs> Welcome, Gus Harper. Thank you. And um, I guess people can see that what I'm trying to do is get his art in. But actually, I think that we're going to have to change sides because I want the art behind you. Awesome. Right, so let's do it. <laughs> Now, uh, as you can see, this is a very casual show, you know, um, don't say amateurish there, go on. Okay, so Gus, tell us, tell us about um, your show. Are you from Los Angeles? I am. I was born and raised. Mm -hmm. Live, uh, grew up in Santa Monica, actually. In Santa Monica. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's kind of fun for me to have a show down here in downtown LA because mm -hmm. when I was growing up, this was a ghost town. There yeah. was nothing going on mm -hmm. down here. So you really notice the difference, huh? So different. Even... I say the last, even from when I graduated high school. Really? Until now, yeah, there's a lot more going on. Right. Yeah, but all the okay. energy down here, like okay. just uh, the energy. Like, what? What do you? What do you mean? Can okay, so sit, well, sit a little more forward. So. When I when I was uh, hanging the art show just at nighttime, and putting mm -hmm. my pieces up, people walking by, knocking on the windows, giving me a thumbs oh, yeah? up. Oh yeah. All right. You know, just you know, all the buildings and restaurants down here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, just the fact that people who live in this building. Don't have to really leave the block. That's for a right. Week at a time. That's they right. Got the restaurants. They got the grocery, the grocery store, store. That's right. The grocery store sells yeah. alcohol too, which is very nice. In New York, we'd still have to. You know, wait. What? I used. I lived in New York only a couple of years ago, and you know, this this feels like uh, New York down here. Absolutely. Where'd you live in New York? I lived on the Upper West Side, but my studio was in Chelsea. I, I, I lived in Chelsea. Oh, okay, I was on 29th yeah. and 7th. All right, I was on 16th between 7th and 8th. Okay, so yeah, yeah. We, were, we were very close. We were neighbors, yeah. the Chelsea Arts Collective, I guess we could call yeah. ourselves. So we call it um, the Garment District. The Garment uh, District, right. right on the border. <laughs> so, but it was great, you know, getting off of Penn Station, that kind of energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I really like New York. I Ultimately, I prefer Los Angeles. Oh, really? Because okay. of the sense of space and everything, but I miss that energy. And it's not, it's not New York down here, it's different, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's got like that kind of fun energy down here. So yeah. When you're down here, you realize that people always say LA is not a city. Mm -hmm. Come down it's here and hang out. It's a city. It's a city. So, There's no doubt yeah, about fun. it. I love having the subway right up the street from me. I can get on it and ride not too far, yeah. but at least I, I, I've taken the subway to dinner sometimes. Right. So you can, I, live on, I live on the west side, so I'm mm -hmm. going to take advantage of that. Yeah, that's true. Now, yeah. That's a whole different ballgame out yeah. there, a whole different world. Mm -hmm. but. Well, I actually moved um, um, downtown from um, Santa Monica. I okay, used to live so right next to um, Santa Monica College. Okay. Well, my studio's at the Santa Monica Airport. Oh, so, okay. It's at the airport. Uh, yep, it's at the airport. So actually, it's a hangar for a Cessna, one of those little yeah. planes. The doors rolled up. And oh, that's interesting. Uh, I almost took flying lessons there. Well, well then I would have seen you at the yeah, restaurant right there. I, I was way too scared to do that. I, I don't think I should be trusted flying a plane. Um, okay, now tell me about your art. What we have behind us is what? Well, this is um, one of my grid paintings. So they're made up of... Uh, se several several canvases. Each one is 12 inches by 12 inches. Mm -hmm. So this particular one is one of my largest ones. It has 78 panels. So, and they are all interlocked. These yeah, are the roses. Yeah, and the roses connect. But sometimes, like I got this painting over here on the other side of the gallery space. There's another one that's in white. Uh -huh. And that one over there, I've taken the, the 12 by 12 panels, and after mm -hmm. I painted them, then I rearranged them so they're scrambled, so the roses don't connect. Oh, so right, one, I see. This one, they do connect. Um, it's kind of a, something that allows, uh, makes it a little bit interactive because the viewer, if they want, can rearrange the pieces. Now, are you telling me that you you didn't put a giant canvas up, paint your roses, and then cut them? That's people ask me all the time. Come no. on, tell the truth. You, look, <laughs> I won't tell anybody. I won't tell anybody. 78 different canvases. 78? Yeah. So how did you make them hook up? Uh, just hung them just like this, just like how they're, how they're displayed. Oh, yeah. I wow. hung it like that, and I just painted. I painted it as if it was one canvas. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, so it's that's uh, really interesting. And then you know, once it's done, if you want to, you can rearrange it. Right. Pieces around. Okay, I'm uh, gonna try to get a, a photograph of, of that that one because that sounds interesting. On occasion, I'll take something like uh, if this is all red, I'll just take one blue rose panel and stick mm -hmm. it right in there, just for a little 
shock value. But these one are blue rose. Yeah, right? some, or something just completely different uh -huh. color, just to make a little make one spot. Oh, one that's interesting. Spot. So, how long have you been exhibiting? Yes, we do. Uh, I would say it's been about eight or nine years, getting close to nine years here. Wow, that's yes. that's quite a long time. So yeah. you must have started painting when you were very young. Well, I started it when I was a little kid, but I mean, then I was just getting down with the Crayolas. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. then I graduated to color pencils, and then acrylic paint, and then eventually mm -hmm. oil paints. Mm -hmm. So it took a while. And so. who is your inspiration now? Well, I mean, it's hard to say who is my inspiration, but I'll tell you what, when I was a little kid, my mom went to art school, mm -hmm. so she kind of was the one who, you know, exposed me to art put mm -hmm. the pencils in front of me. Mm -hmm. She didn't necessarily like, teach me or tell me what to do. She just right. exposed me to it and let me go mm -hmm. and do my thing. Right. So, uh, but now, now I have a nice community of artist friends, so kind of like get inspired. Um, the opening will be Thursday night, I yeah, think, Thursday. right? And um, a lot of people from this building will be there, I'm sure, then. Yeah, it's fun. They've been coming by and knocking on yeah. the doors. And you know what's nice about having in an alternative space is I get the freedom to hang the work the way I want to. Right. So nobody, mm -hmm. like, you know, I know how the pieces are supposed to be, and I know which pieces I don't want shown next to each other, so I mm -hmm. not have to worry about that. It's my call. So the nice flowers, way. you know, like, you're not inspired by Bingo's irises. Uh, I would say so. Bingo's. Yeah, I would just say, um, I don't even really remember how I first started doing, <laughs> what made me first do one of the red roses. But I, I do always laugh when somebody says, oh, he paints he paints roses. Mm -hmm. And then people think, oh, like a still life, like a vase and flower. Mm -hmm. I'm like, nah. You yeah, you got a whole it. different, different uh, approach to them. I, would this, these be called still lives? Would this be called? Uh, no, I wouldn't call it a still life. I would just, it's not. It's oh, not yeah. So you, you don't use a model, a rose yeah. as a model. You no only model. have it in, in your, your mind. Yeah, I just make it up as I go. Same thing with the pine cones. And, you know, my, somebody might laugh, like, you're painting pine cones. Mm -hmm. Like, why? And, is it still life? I'm like, no, they're not still lives. And if you see them, they're hopefully mm -hmm. I painted them different, differently than you, than other people normally. Would yeah, say. I've never seen um, pine cones. Well, in for that one thing, color. they're green. I mean, yeah. green. Uh, can you see these, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? There we have pine cones. Um, let me take it off the artist's face. <laughs> now, and um, someone noticed your. Um, Pomegranate seeds, yeah, too. Yeah, those, those catch people's attention. So yeah, much. those are really, I mean, it's it's a red that's kind of, of like this. Is it a different red that you use? It, well, you know, it's, it's a little bit less monochromatic. It's got all different kind of oranges and yellows in mm -hmm. there. And mm -hmm. so a little bit more contrast, which I think make, makes it visually pop. Mm -hmm. But I think people respond to the pomegranate because it has so many, so many, uh, it represents so much to so many different cultures. Mm -hmm. like, I have people come up to me all the time, like, oh man, in my culture, to my people, do you know what that means? Like they'll say, oh, to the, my people are Greek. You know what pomegranates mean to the Greeks? My people are yeah. Jewish. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, so, so it really has cultural significance yeah. when it comes out here. And I, I kind of, after a while, I was laughing. like, you know what? I think it means something to everybody. Yeah, <laughs> and something So um, some people have just a childhood memory of eating pomegranates. Right. Um, but, you know, it represents, like, the symbolism mm -hmm. of the actual object. I think that in, um, I was in Spain last year. And in southern Spain, um, the pomegranate is very significant. It was very significant for the Arabs, too, when they um, ruled that part of Spain. But um, um, the, um, I'm blanking on the name of the, of, of the, Span the old Arab castle that's there, but it has a number of pomegranates painted around it, uh, planted around it. Um, and it's very significant fruit. That I yeah, I always think it symbolizes, like, vitality, mm -hmm. even sexuality, mm -hmm. health. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and now it's like part of the health craze with all the pomegranate juice people are drinking. Just yeah, that. absolutely. Um, I had prostate cancer, and that's what they told me I should drink, so be careful, y'all. Yeah, yeah, and go and get your prostate checked. Um, <laughs> now, the, um, so we're about out of time now, so is there anything else that you'd like to, to tell us about? Um, that's it. I just hope people have a chance to come down, that they just... You'll have a good time to see mm -hmm. some recognizable objects mm -hmm. painted a little bit differently than they might normally see them. And, and if they'd time. like to contact you for any reason, they can go to my website, which is gusharperart.com, and they can email me, gusharper at hotmail. It's pretty simple. Um, they can come to the show. All right. Yeah. That's yeah. it, y'all. Thank you for coming to Golf Dinner Views again. And